So, any questions among the public? But that's a surprise. Are you that's sure that you want to ask something? Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure, because then uh, I'll be kind, so he Smash buys me sweet. drinks. So they buy me drinks. Um, no, no, I'm joking. So, okay, I'll, I'll start with you, because I think I don't have a... I don't have something to ask you, but I've got a comment. When you said that you transitioned your career from, from academia to the municipality, I think what you transitioned is teaching what you know to people with expertise, yeah. to people without expertise. So dissemina dissemination to people that are not experts, yeah. which is 10 times harder, and yeah. they don't really appreciate what you do all the time. So I think yeah. that that's, that's, that's what happened. Sorry for the, if the reading is wrong, yeah, yeah. I think this is what yeah, happens. And right. yeah. I, I don't have anything to comment. I think, you know, uh, it's, it's really good. Even the, if you try like 1% of what you've done with yeah, yeah. experts is, is a win. Yeah. I've got a, a question for you because I, I, I really like the, the way that you structure the work, but I'm not sure about at some point, you start talking about defining the, uh, not the acceptable values. You, you, talk, you used another word, I don't remember. Yeah. The, the okay. ideal values, even, yeah. even worse. Uh, <laughs> but which, which I have a feeling that they move in a linear, so they, they're, not all, they're all on a line, right? They're like plus or minus one. It's a floating point number, it's one of them. Yes. Why do you use this? Maybe I didn't understand the, the, the I missed something. Yeah. By why you need, ideal values when you try to understand the, co the, the morphological complexity, right? Why you need that ideal, and who says it's ideal? It, you identify that from a comparative uh, approach to uh, samples that you consider, um, let's say, standards to move to, okay? Like a good... Uh, 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 good, good situations where you find these qualities that was defined as, uh, as good or, or positive urbanity. Like. And can you give me an example? Maybe I don't get what you mean by what. What is an ideal value for one of them? Remember the, the definition of urbanity, where I pointed out something space which is very active. Uh huh. Uh, uh, so uh, once you get uh, uh, spaces with these characteristics and you mm -hmm. uh, extract those values, uh, you can start figuring out if these values uh, uh, correspond to patterns or not. So that one slider could be, let's say, integration between one and five, yeah. or density between, I don't know, yeah. something. I don't know about density exactly, but yeah, okay. okay. Okay, so the second comment, I think I got it. I'm not sure, I think you might have to review the fact that you need to have ideal, that you, yeah, that you set the ideal and not maybe some sort of other learning process sets the ideal. And a question is, are your test examples in the same area, in the same city, or you, you want to sample things from different places? We sample things from different places. And it's one of the, and it's one of them questions. Okay. Uh, um, and uh, there's still some criticism about it. Um, as I said, this this is uh, uh, this is not the entire uh, research from Samir. It's actually half of the, the research, which is about setting out uh, uh, a set of uh, indicators to work with. Mm -hmm. And the work she did uh, is another thing. It will be the topic of another paper. But anyway, uh, the, um, there was a, a long process of learning for her mm -hmm. during this, uh, 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 this PhD, where she always had this uh, idea, well, there's great quality in the space that I live in, in, in Lisbon. There's, I want to, to understand what is the difference mm -hmm. between the quality I find here and what I find mm -hmm. in the sea. Mm -hmm. uh, which actually, uh, the, the, some of the samples that she took from Recife was actually still a part of, of the original settlement, which was Portuguese mm -hmm. planning. Mm -hmm. uh, anyway, very much changed in the latest years, but 
but still you find most of the grid is the original grid. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she wanted to, to, to understand uh, uh, the difference by measuring uh, 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 these values. Mm -hmm. So there was a lot of confusion for her during the, the, uh, the definition of, um, of the method. Um, in the sense that she wanted to measure everything together and, mm -hmm. and from everything that she was measuring, extract conclusions. So there was mm -hmm. no, uh, uh, no system of values to understand what was good and what was not. And mm -hmm. So the first thing I told her is you should start from doing a literature review. You'll find information about that in the literature review. That, that was the first step that she did. But the literature review was not able to give information about everything and mm -hmm. what would be good or bad, mm -hmm. okay? And also, some things are context-dependent. Uh, Correct, yeah. And that's another step in, in the research. At a certain point, she wanted to work with many cities from uh, 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 South America. But then there was the problem of you know, getting the data and yeah. all that. And <clears throat> she, she already did she didn't have already that much time, mm -hmm. uh, so Fair. we we settled down like, let's work on the methodology mm -hmm. and make it as strong as possible. Mm -hmm. And if the methodology is okay and you can explain, then you have to apply it to a lot more cases and get more uh, evidence. Mm -hmm. So I think the thesis has an interesting uh, uh, method. The methodological approach is very interesting, but it lacks evidence in the sense it lacks no. quantity of samples, let's say. No. In any case, uh, there's the second half of, uh, uh, of the, uh, the thesis, which is finding patterns in the data. And then mm -hmm. she started working uh, uh, with uh, uh, statistical approaches to find correlations between uh, uh, these values, and that was the method to try to reach that determinant factor, or mm -hmm. what would be the determinant factor. Mm -hmm. And there's still work to, to do on that. She had to finish the, the, the thesis for several reasons, and so <laughs> as they all have. The, that's the reason why that part we still have to sit down and work a bit further. But this part is, I think, already quite structured. Yeah. Indeed, indeed. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not critical at all yes, about yeah. they, they have to finish the PhD at some yes, point. That's, yes, I'm yes. not going to be critical about this ever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I understand, I think this is commendable. The work is really good and it's, I mean, the, 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 um, the journey, let's say, is good. There are a couple of hiccups probably. Uh, one thing I would give you as a feedback to tell her or, or work with her, because you told me that you're, yes. you're also interested in this, and I'm happy to discuss more about this, uh, is that maybe because you, you've got the power to select the size of the associated graph around your area, for example, I wouldn't use any of the normalized angular choice and normalized angular um, integration. Because mathematically, they're not that, I mean, they're not very, you know, very okay, let's say. <laughs> let's go, because you can, you can, you can have the same size of graph around your areas of interest or whatever, like the blocks or how many blocks you've got. You don't need to normalize to anything if you have the same amount of uh, vertices in a graph. So there's no need for normalization. So you, you can read the pure data without some sort of em Bill Hillier's empirical yeah, normalization yeah, yeah, yeah. mathematically. Okay, that's my, it's not a com, it's not like a yeah. criticism. Could, yeah, that's could it. Be, yeah. could be, could be. And I'm happy to discuss. Uh, I think he was first. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <It's my outside. laughs> not today. Okay. Just, just. Uh, this is not a, exactly a question. Just a comment to David Viana. When I was hearing your uh, presentation, I was uh, uh, getting worried about uh, digital governances. Digital governance. I mean. Uh, in some way, I was scared about uh, these digital tools could uh, enlarge the gap in between the decision takers and the, uh, and the citizenship. Uh, 
everything was solved when you, you, you presented the geoportal, no? the geoportal that is uh, the, 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 the gate to make the, the, the citizens possible to, to take decisions or to arrive to the decision take, takers. No, that's only a comment. Um, well, this digital governance that we are trying to um, put together, because it is not yet put together, it is not excluded with the personal uh, uh, dialogue. For instance, the, the ODAC uh, process it implies that the owners of the plots uh, within the, the limitation of the ODAC, they, they should work together in order to re resolve, in order to uh, uh, bring a solution for the ODAC. And this means that we need to be in permanent dialogue with them. Physically, they, we call them to the municipality, we explain the process, we explain what they need to do, we explain how the interaction between us is going to occur if it is a ODAC led, led by us municipality because we have interest in, the, for instance, if we have a plot, we have interest in the ODAC resolution. If we don't have a plot, if it is just uh, um, private uh, owners, they should um, uh, develop the, the process. But uh, as the um, uh, most common way to resolve the process is by uh, what we call a unidad de discussão, is execution unity. It's uh, uh, the municipality responsibility to um, to establish the delimitation of this executive uh, 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 unity. So, in a way, we need to always establish permanent dialogue between the owners and the municipality. These kind of um, 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 platforms, what they make it easy is for them, between them, they have access to information, data, they simulate, they can, um, uh, by their own means, they can have a lot of uh, things that it would be only with us, but then through this way, it can also be with them to help them to make decisions between them. And then when talking to us, they will be more supported with their own decisions and their own information that we also have. So it, it is a more balanced way to, for us to have information and for them also to have information. It's not only us, municipality, that have all the information. They don't have anything. So they, we both have the same. So the dialogue is, is set on the same uh, ground, you understand? Not in a, we have a different ground because we have more information or data and they have less. So the dialogue um, is, uh, is always there. And this not ex excludes these um, other ways of participation that uh, is not only digital participation. Because some of the owners of these plots, they are very old people. They, they hardly know how to use this. So, but the technicians, they have, they know. So even in the discussion between the technicians and the, um, the, the, the owners, it's a way to facilitate what they can uh, show to the owners because they uh, have the information, they will have the information quite available. And it's, it's a, a transparency thing also because if we have information, we also provide the information that we have to the... To the make it public. Yeah, yeah, yes, of course. The kind of information is much more easy for the people to understand. Yeah. So uh, I think they can participate in a more yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, logic way because yeah. you can discuss and show them why. Yeah. yeah. So they understand it's For not instance, that magic thing yeah. coming from no one knows uh, For instance, what. In the ODAC process, we have to, as I told you, every owners, they have to give part of their own plots to um, equipments or green areas. It's more easy for us to explain if it is going to be equipment or a green area. If they say, in, if they check in a map that around their area there is a lot of green areas, it's no logical to ask for more green areas. So we need to ask for equipment for or the other way, for instance, or neither because we have equipment and green areas. So we are not going to ask um, for them to give uh, as part part of their plots, but we are going to ask them to pay in money what they should um, um, give us in in plot in part of the plots. 
for me, the, the most important the, uh, capability of these tools is to request the politicians the achievement of the promises of the goals. Yeah, yeah. 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 This is truly uh, democratic. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> thank you. I have a comment to make. Um, you, 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 you told about trying to implement uh, uh, the algorithms, the, the, the method that uh, Frederic Moritz uh, developed. I, I know that very well because I was part of his PhD yeah. uh, uh, jury. And, and I think the method is, is, is quite interesting. I also know the difficulty. Yeah. The main difficulty is that it, uh, it provides a way for taxation depending on how much infrastructure yeah. uh, is uh, addressed to you. So some people have an entire road serving their house, others uh, uh, share a smaller road uh, for, uh, between many people. So the costs for, uh, for the municipality are, are, different. are different, and somehow the taxation should compensate yeah. that a little bit. And that is the algorithm for the basis of that kind of compensation. The problem is it discriminates everyone. Yeah. Everyone will have to pay a different tax. It's, it's a fair difference because they're being, uh, 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 they're, they're having the, the benefits from having more infrastructure uh, uh, for, their, uh, for their, their use. But this is going to generate a problem. Yeah. Uh, and I think the work he developed is not just very interesting, it's very important, but it has this difficulty, uh, which is also difficulty, uh, uh, which is typical from uh, what is a democratic world. Yeah. And I hope that it stays a democratic world. We, so, but, yeah. but it's difficult. We will have the same sort of problems uh, when we implement the pressure area uh, because yes. the pressure area, the map of with the pressure areas, implies that will there will be areas that people will pay more taxes than areas that, with people paying less taxes, and that will also be a problem. This is something that we will have to, to, to work with the economics, uh, the financial service of the municipality, in order to to set a kind of a, a, a gradual approach to this uh, difference between taxation, because otherwise it will be a revolution. <laughs> People will. <laughs> but I think it's fair. I think it's fair. Oh, maybe no, it's fair. The no, 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 it's fair. It's fair because uh, the, the amount of buildings in a, in a street, uh, full of buildings, and the amount of build, a building in a street, it's a, it, it's a totally different situation bet between a street serving 10 buildings or one building. So yeah. that, that's what the, the algorithm does, is, 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 is looking at that relation between infrastructure and what infrastructure serves. Yeah. yeah. I agree. Now? Okay, thank you very much, uh, both of you. Uh, two very interesting presentations. I have a question for Jose. I have been uh, working with Space Syntax for quite a long time, and uh, I'm an architect as well. So the factor of space and form are very important to us. Uh, so your definition, I agree with your definition of urbanity. Uh, we really need to understand those configurational and spatial and formal characteristics. And I think that uh, David can also comment on that. I lived for six years outside Detroit. This is a shrinking city uh, that was a mono-industry city. And various structural uh, changes affected the economy of the city, the production of cars, <coughs> and the economy of the city, and eventually the social dynamics in the city. So large areas declined and people moved out, and uh, only poor people live in the, in the city center, and there's always also social segregation and so on. If you are familiar with the story of Detroit, maybe I don't need to explain it any further. Yes. Uh, so, having gone to the United States, being European, and really knowing the importance that space has and form has for us, I question that idea over there, in the sense that whatever one does to the urban fabric, it's not going to bring any change, and that what is needed is really political change, economic change, in order for people to get jobs. Yeah? You need to give people jobs rather than try, with urban design methods, to regenerate Detroit. It's an it's a economical problem. And I wonder whether we are experiencing that at a very slow pace, 
a similar phenomenon perhaps in some European cities with the changes in the production system, with the fact that lots of people buy now in the internet rather than in the shops. And what produced the cities, the strength of the cities, the urbanity of the city was a model of production, an economic model of production that has changed radically. And whether we really need to study that and understand that, whether we are studying something but the city has moved somewhere else. I agree with you. And uh, as I said, uh, th there are a set of assumptions in, the, in, in, the, in this study. Uh, and some of the assumptions are being questioned nowadays due to this type of reality. Mm. And I also think that urban space in the United States is something very different. Yeah. And at, at its origin is almost, most of the structures are car-based. And so it, 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 we, we have to talk about a totally different scale and, and dynamics of use of public space. The only thing I, I, I still believe, because we still find that in, in, uh, in most, uh, thanks, in most uh, um, uh, European cities, is that it seems that it, it, it works okay every time you have a certain uh, a group of conditions in, 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 um, uh, in the city, and the space becomes very dynamic. People like living there and using the public space and interacting in the public space, and essentially doing a more pedestrian-oriented life, which we know it's, uh, has some positive uh, aspects regarding uh, the sustainability uh, goals. And actually, there are few cases in the United States which are good examples in that direction, um, especially in the, the north of, of the United States. Um, where we, we find there is this tendency towards more uh, pedestrian-oriented space. And we still find similar uh, conditions in, this, in these cases. Uh, I think Detroit, uh, well, let's forget Detroit. I think <laughs> the models of economics are essential also, and as I said, there are some uh, indicators obviously missing here. I spoke about <laughs> some related with uh, uh, the pedestrian space um, that had, have to be included. Obviously, there are also uh, uh, indicators on uh, econ economics that should be introduced. And uh, Jane Jacobs already spoke a little bit about that subject. So it's obvious, but that's a very difficult topic, in fact. And I totally agree that it affects, affects a lot, the, the, the problem. And just as a, 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 an example of something which, which is not exactly the same thing, but as a similar uh, uh, problem, uh, José Duarte just uh, spoke today about uh, trying to solve uh, uh, the housing problem, and he showed some examples. It's fantastic research, but I think that politics is going to solve a lot more uh, uh, the housing problem than uh, that type of technology or whatever type of technology. For instance, the Dutch, at a certain point, to have accessible housing, uh, they, they put the effort of uh, uh, um, accessible housing on the, uh, the promoters, the, the, the housing promoters, so that they would have to build 10% that would be selected randomly uh, uh, to, for, uh, let's say, table prices. And that means that they're not going to build a crap building on the side of their plan because they know that you know, the luxury one might be the one selected. So that creates a kind of a quality average on, on one, one hand, puts some part of the uh, effort on uh, uh, the, 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 the promoters. Also, they are contributing a little bit because instead of being uh, of, uh, uh, investing the money on poor uh, condition housing, they actually give that money to the promoter and they say, you have to build within these conditions. And we're going to select randomly. And that's, that's a very good policy, really good. And, 
So that's one example of things that uh, uh, we can do, and, 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 and it's about politics. Yeah, thank you. Hi, uh, for Joseph as well. Um, I was uh, very interested in the concept you said about um, these uh, pathologies that might be explained by the difference uh, between the potentialities and the actual use. And since I understood that uh, your samples were taken in Lisbon but were supposed to be applied on Brazil, um, then I was wondering if, if you were having also samples in in Lisbon, and I, I mean, sorry, in Brazil, in, in this city, um, as to differentiate, like, maybe different expectations that could be context-specific, so that then the urban strategies applied uh, could be, like, resampled to that new context. Yeah, the, the, um, the samples in, in Brazil, in the Recife, some samples are taken from uh, um, relatively recent uh, uh, tissue, but there are two samples taken from the older city, which in terms of uh, uh, city form actually resemble a lot uh, some of the cases in, in, in Portugal. They have similar uh, uh, conditions, but they are totally abandoned at the moment. Uh, and I think this is a cultural issue uh, essentially, because I think the space has a lot of potential for uh, developing and getting quite active. Um, the interesting thing is two of the samples uh, that she took from Lisbon during the pandemics, uh, if you would pass there walking, you wouldn't see anybody. Nobody was living in that in some of, the, uh, of those areas, because they were too central, too touristical uh, oriented, and especially since the, the 2014, 2015, the, 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 the rise of tourism in Lisbon was amazing, but you know, the, 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 the prices doubled in a week. This, this was, you know, the, the, the construction prices doubled in a week. Uh, and, and now it's, it's tripled comparing to, to, to 2014. So it, it's becoming crazy. Basically, uh, uh, Portuguese people, most Portuguese people are not able to live in the center, the city center, because it's too expensive. And, and the, 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 the effects are going to get worse because uh, in 2014, there were still a lot of young people trying to find uh, uh, new houses for them, and they actually still found, before that, uh, very cheap opportunities, just 2013, because we were getting out of the crisis, the, the 2008 crisis, and only in, in the beginning of 2014, the things started to get crazy. So these people that bought houses there means that these are the last uh, 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 Portuguese people that are going to live there. Once they move away, it's going to be all tourists. It's going to get worse. Or uh, millionaires that come from elsewhere. They're not really from Lisbon. Like Madonna, she was living in, in Lisbon for, for a few years. So that's an example. And that's also one of the, uh, the, the reasons why the prices are rising. Um, but uh, the, the important thing is once you, you, you see that there are no resident people there uh, because the, the, they are just uh, uh, renting places or even if they buy the place and live there for, for a while, once you get to the particular cases, you understand, no, these people are just here temporarily then they don't really live there. There are, well, one typical case is that you find uh, that a lot of buildings have been renewed, uh, but they're used as, just as investment. It's be better than put your money in, in a bank. So basically people buy buildings, apartments, whatever, nobody's living there. You know, it's just a bank account. A building became a ba bank account. And that's happening in many cities. So. Well, that's what I mean by reading the pathology. 
Okay, you have a lot of things that are okay, except population density is not okay. Something is really wrong with the population density, and that's uh, one of the readings that you can take out of the, of that pathology. Uh, first, uh, on uh, your uh, presentation, you were trying to define uh, uh, urbanity and uh, with several factors and uh, methods, one of them, for example, space uh, syntax. But my question is, why is not yet defined that single urbanity? <laughs> I, I will make my point. Uh, some years ago, one uh, friend of ours uh, was studying with space syntax the square. He analyzed the thousands of squares. He didn't arrive to any conclusion. That's to say, we don't know, in terms of uh, space syntax, it was, it was, what is a square? Well, space syntax, as a very large connotation of semantics for uh, what I call quantities and thus call measures. <laughs> I call quantities because my background is physics and in physics those are quantities. Uh, but the, there is a big connotation of semantics to produce new, new quantities or new measures. But there is no production rule in the language of space syntax to create new concepts in uh, space. Why space in space syntax is only the line, the segment, the convex space, uh, the node, and uh, maybe the pixel. Well, why, why, is not why is not defined square? Why is not defined monument? Couldn't, couldn't, uh, I think it's possible to do that. Well, my background is from uh, is from uh, computation theory. One of the main things is the theory of languages. And uh, well, we define good language if they have the capacity to define in one world a very large uh, semantic network. Uh, why don't we define, uh, uh, have the rules? Okay. <laughs> okay. That's, that's nice. Very interesting. Sorry, I don't. Meaning linguistic interference. So the idea of more structure is not rely on natural language. As little as possible. To rely on natural language as little as possible in the So it is. No, the, the idea is that it's non-discursive, okay? It's a non-discursive technique. Yeah. So I'm not defending it, I'm just saying the reason. If you look at the space of the machine, if you go to the first chapter, he will explain it there. Uh, uh, because true. any language needs to have what I call a denotation of semantics, so yeah, a translation. Totally. My next paper is about this. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, but uh, let me finish. We need uh, any language as to have a reference to other languages, namely to the architect language. The, the architect does not know what depth is. Integration, what is, what's that? But he knows what is a square, and he would like to have the, the reference in the space syntax to what he knows. It's an excellent point, excellent point. Okay. Okay. Let me see, so, say so, uh, another thing about politics. Uh, Sophie is absolutely right. There was a Pritzker Prize named Aravena that I don't know if uh, there is another interpretation, but what he proposed and did win the uh, Pritzker Prize was to uh, make solution of uh, housing for the miserables with miserable housings funded by the banks. It's my interpretation of Aravena. Well, they don't think... With miserable fundings. Yeah. Miserable. Missed an, you missed one miserable there. <laughs> well, they, they don't think for eliminating miserable people. Not physically, of course. 
And second, the old, the, the old politics of uh, social housing with public funding. Well, that, that disappeared. <laughs> And so, and thank you, amazing points. So, I guess I more questions. <laughs> so, maybe we can close the session now, or more questions? Chair of the formal methods, can I? Sure. Um, hi, um, I would like to ask Jose um, a question on, on the work that you presented. Um, and it, it's, it's, it actually came about with the discussion that we're having. So we, you, you're using formal methods to study the, the urbanity. And I, I was just thinking, um, the, the cultural component and the co context component, did you talk to people in both cases, in Lisbon and Recife? I mean, uh, sometimes it's not just about speciality. Sometimes it's about the human condition in the different contexts. So I, I wanted to know if there was some, some no. contact. No. Uh, the, the, there could be methods that uh, could track people, people's movements. Of course, you can get into typical uh, 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 social, sociology uh, um, uh, methods like you know really contacting people and getting questionnaires and, and things like that. But uh, in this case, uh, the, the idea was to relate it to to urban form because that's what urban designers do. Mm -hmm. We design cities. We uh, somehow we try to shape the cities with decisions. Uh, some of decisions, some of the decisions are actually not about the design, the polit political ones sometimes shape a lot. But the important thing here was focusing on whatever we can learn uh, that um, help us design. So, so you, it's, all, it's all focused on that. So, so you, were, you were deciding for the people from the gold form? Yes, accept, accepting that when you find peop more people uh, using particular spaces, it means that the build form is more accepted by this, uh, that, th those people. It's, it's essentially understanding that if people use it, if people like it, perhaps that's what we need to... Uh, uh, yeah, sorry, can I, can I just follow up? Sure. Really quick. <laughs> No, I understand that, but it's it's a question that she made that you were sampling from another context, okay, um, to create your uh, ideal value. You're sampling from a context that was considered to be uh, an ideal one. Yes, but it, it or a it good one, let's say. Let, let's skip ideal, okay? <laughs> a good one. A good one. <laughs> yeah, but then um, the, the question, like the, the, the questions before were about the, 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 the fact that your sampling wasn't in, in, in the context that you were then yes. to apply. And uh, the, so th that was actually my question. I mean, y yes, I, I understand that you, 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 you're thinking it's, about... It's still a discussion between me and Samira. Okay, so, so you, you, you understand what I'm I understand trying. totally. Okay, yes. so are you, are you thinking uh, in a following well, let's put it stage? This way. The important thing about the methodology is that, let's say, uh, I love Barcelona, okay? So I want to understand uh, the, what are the, the, these measures about Barcelona. At least I could take a sample of the area that I like and just try, try to find what are the characteristics, how can I deal with them and, 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 and design with these characteristics in an abstract way. So I'm not copying uh, the form, I'm understanding the properties of the form and then reproducing those properties. Being able to produce, let's say, variations of the form, uh, but producing the same qualities. But do you believe that there's the contact with the humans in, in those spaces would no, reinforce no, I think there are the changes. 
This is probably valid only for Western culture. Okay. Okay. May I say something? Imagine that. Just, just to close. What I'm going to say, I'm sure it's not going to close, but to to fire. Imagine for a moment you are a speculator and have these powerful tools. What, what is going to happen? Okay, let's continue <laughs> tonight. <laughs> These tools are uh, useful for everybody, even for the people who can des destroy the city. This is a new trend, how to establish controls in the use of these tools. Uh, well, nothing, nothing else. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>